Okay, so let's go through renal physiology MCQs. So these are some of the multiple choice questions which you may find in your exams. So my first question here reads, the gold standard for estimation of glomerular filtration rate is the estimation of urinary clearance of A, inulin, B, creatinine, C, urea, D, manito, E, glucose, and F, para amino hyperic acid so among these choices here which one is considered to be the gold standard so what you should know is that when measuring glomerular filtration rate there are some requirements which should be made for the marker that you want to use to qualify okay so some of these requirements are the marker that you are using should achieve a stable uh, plasma concentration so the plasma concentration should be should not be altered. Then secondly, should the marker should be freely filtered across the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So what I uh, that point mean is that that marker that you in inject into the bloodstream when it comes from the if afferent to the efferent, when it reaches the Bowman uh, the glomerulus, it should be freely filtered from the bloodstream into the Bowman's space there. Then the another point is that it should not be reabsorbed or secreted by the nephron. Okay, so the marker should not be reabsorbed or secreted. So if it is reabsorbed, then you won't know your GFR. And if it is secreted, it is going to overestimate your GFR, which is the glomerular filtration rate. And then it should not be metabolized or produced by the kidney. So the kidney should not produce that marker and it should not be metabolized. Okay. And then from there, it should not alter the GFR. So let's go back to our choices here. So the one which is going to have all those requirements is going to qualify to be the gold standard. So when you look at inulin, inulin is achieves a stable concentration. It is free filtered across the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule, and it uh, it is not reabsorbed or secreted by the nephron and then it is not metabolized or produced by the kidneys so uh inulin is simply a foreign uh, foreign substance and then not alter the gfr so it doesn't even alter the gfr wow so that is the code standard for estimation of chromatic filtration when you look at creatinine creatinine is also a good marker but now the problem is that creatinine is secreted okay uh, once it has been filtered here the fraction that remains into the inferent arterioles it goes into the peritubules and then there it will be secreted back into the into the uh, tubules here in the renal tubules so that will overestimate our gfr remember gfr is simply the amount of filtrates that are filtered here per minute okay not what is secreted that side no we want to estimate the filtrates here that is the gfr so we need a substance that is just filtered but not secreted from the tubule direct into the uh, into the into our renal tubules here okay so that's why creatinine is not considered to be the gold standard okay urea urea can be uh, sec, uh can be filtered but it can also diffuse into the bloodstream manito manito it alters the g f r it what it does it accumulates water wherever it is it will accumulate water therefore it is going to alter the it is going to alter the gfr it's also going to achieve uh it also going to alter the plasma concentration okay to become hyper high hypotonic okay and then from there uh looking at glucose glucose is never excreted it is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tube per amino hyperic acid this one is also a good marker 
but it is also secreted by the from the bloodstream into the into the renal tubules so for that it is not a gold standard so the correct answer here is a Illinois meets all our requirements so it is considered to be our to be a gold standard for estimation of glomerular filtration so move on to question two so question two reads in clinical brackets okay so in clinical brackets the urinary clearance of which substance is mostly frequently estimated as a surrogate of GFR? A. Enilin. B. Creatinine. C. Urea. D. Manito. So the correct answer here is creatinine. Creatinine is used, is most frequently uh, used to estimate GFR in practical in clinical practice why because creatinine is produced in the body by the muscle tissues so it is not a foreign substance and then from there it is not even expensive because it is already there in the body so inulin is a foreign substance you need to put it in the body so but in clinical practice what is mostly the substance which is mostly frequently used to as a sub uh, as a surrogate of GFR is creatinine. So the correct answer here is B. Question three: Which of the following substances should not be used to measure GFR glomerular filtration rate? A. Inulin. B. Creatinine. C. Ethylamate. And D. Glucose. So which of the following substances should not be used to measure GFR? So among all these uh, choices here, here, what should not be used is glucose. Because glucose, we said for a marker to qualify, it should not be reabsorbed. But glucose is reabsorbed or bit 100%. It, the, the glucose which is secreted in the Bowman's capsule is all reabsorbed into the bloodstream so we can't use glucose to measure gfr so the correct answer here is d it is, should not be used question four the term filtration fraction is used to refer to a lenoplasma flow over glomerular filtration rate b glomerular filtration rate over lenoplasma flow c Renoplasma flow multiplied by GFR. So for you to find your filtration fraction, you need to divide your GFR, which is chromera filtration rate, over the renal plasma flow. So the renal plasma flow is simply the amount or the volume of plasma which comes to the kidney. Okay, and then the GFR is simply the volume of uh the volume of plasma filtered per minute that is gfr so if you divide your gfr by your renal plasma flow then you will find the filtration fraction so the correct answer is b so question five what fraction of renal plasma flow is normally filtered in the glomerular capillaries what fraction of renal plasma flow is normally filtered in the glomerular capillaries a 0.1 b 0.2 C point three and D point four. The correct answer is B. Twenty percent of the plasma received by the the glomerulus is filtered. So point two is the correct answer here. Okay, so the fraction of renal plasma flow which is filtered is twenty percent. So question five, the correct answer is B. So we move on to question six. So question six reads, when mean arterial pressure is held constant, selective constriction of glomerular efferent arterioles will A, increase GFR, B, decrease filtration fraction c decrease renal plasma 
withdraw so what they're trying to say here is that if you the mean arterial pressure is constant constriction of glomerular inferent arterial will do what so a it will increase gfr because here if if we constrict this arterial this side there will be accumulation of uh, plasma here which will lead to increase the gfr which is the glomerular filtration rate okay and then from there decrease in filtration fraction so if you increase the gfr what happens to the fraction filtration fraction rate you know that gfr fraction uh, filtration fraction is equals to gfr over renal plasma flow okay renal plasma flow so renal plasma flow is simply the amount of uh, plasma which is received by the glomerulus in a minute so if you vasoconstrict this side what will happen is that you are stopping blood from flowing there to the through the efferent arterial there so meaning our renal plasma flow is going to reduce so if it reduces then what happens to our fraction filtration fraction it is also going to do it if this one increase then this one is going to reduce what happens our fraction is going to increase okay so decrease in renal plasma flow so yes the renal plasma flow is going to decrease because we have vasoconstricted this side so the flow that side will be reduced what will happen even the flow this side is going to be reduced because there will be accumulation of plasma plasma in the glomerulus there. So meaning this one is going to decrease, yes, and GFR is going to increase. So the correct answer is A and C are correct. Question 7. Messenger cells are similar to A. Pericyte B. Fibrocytes C. Masty cells D. Epidemal cells messenger cells these are cells found in the kidney so these cells are found in the distal convoluted tubules these cells are uh, distal convoluted tubule where what we call a glomerular uh, a juxta glomerular apparatus is formed so this juxta glomerular apparatus it is formed by the macular denser we have the messenger cells themselves and we also have the glomerul the juxta glomerular cells which produces renin so these cells which are here those are what we call the messenger cells so they are similar to which cells among these choices here so the messenger cells are similar to the parasites the parasites these are cells which are found on the layer of uh, endothelial cells on the capillaries so these cells what they do they will contract when they contract they will reduce the diameter of the capillaries thereby restricting blood blood flow okay that is how the parasites operate so when you look at messenger cells they also when they contract here they are going to reduce the diameter of these capillaries here thereby reducing blood flow there and also they they are all going to affect the GFR there because the area is going to the surface area is going to be reduced if they contract. Okay, they contract in fact. So messenger cells are similar to parasites, okay, because they can contract and reduce the diameter of uh, a capillary, and the parasite do, does the same. So the correct answer. Question seven is a. Question eight. In humans. What percentage of nephrons has long loops of Henle? A. 5%, B. 15%, C. 25%, and D. 85%. So what percentage of nephrons has long loops of Henle? So nephrons are of two types. We have the juxta uh, medullary uh, nephrons 
and also have the cortical the cortical nephrons so the juxta medullary nephrons have a long group of henle but the cortical nephrons have a short loop of henle so this loop of henle which is long in the juxta medullary nephrons go deep into the medulla but for the cortical nephrons they don't go deep into the medulla so in the kidney we have a number of cortical uh, nephrons than the juxta medullary nephrons so what percentage of nephrons make uh, has long loops meaning what percentage of nephrons are the juxta medullary nephrons okay so here the correct answer is the correct answer for question 8 is b 15 percent so the ones which have long loops of henley are 15 percent most of the nephrons have short loops of henley that is their cortical nephrons than juxta medullary nephrons so the correct answer here is b so question 9 the macula densa is located in the a juxta glomerular cells b extra glomerular messenger c beginning of the distal tubule and d peritubular capillaries so where are macula densa located so the macula densa are located in the beginning of the distal tubule so in this diagram here you can see the distal computed tubule in the beginning you are going to find what we call macula densa so this macula densa they sense the concentration of sodium chloride okay and there and then from there they are going to to do what to to reduce they are going to affect the efferent arterials okay and then from there blood flow here will be restricted and there will be accumulation of uh, blood in here so that will facilitate the uh, glomerular filtration rate so but where the, these macula densers are found it is in the distal convoluted tube that is in the beginning of distal tube so the correct answer is c question 10 the kidney do not synthesize or secrete a calcitriol b renin c erythropoietin erythropoietin d postaglandins 2 so the kidney do not synthesize or secrete this renin it secretes what we call renin which has a single end not double in in there okay so this is a hormone which is secreted by the kidney this one is secreted by the stomach in infants the function of this renin here is simply to coagulate, coagulate milk in infants you know the babies just feed on milk so that milk is a liquid when it flows into the GIT in liquid form digestion may be difficult so what that renin does it coagulates the milk making them in chunks so that digestion can easily take place in the stomach so if it is a liquid it will just flow into the duodenum and then excreted okay but the help of renin comes into play here it is going to make that milk into chunks it is going to coagulate it so that digestion of proteins take place okay so the kidney synthesizes renin not this one with double any in the middle there so the correct answer there is b thank you so much for watching don't forget to like if i tell you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos and leave your comment please concerning this video in the comment section below